Hey, this is Arthur Hill, Senior Technical Analyst with StockCharts.com. It is Tuesday, June 11th, and you're tuned into On Trend, the show designed to keep you on the right side of the trend. And speaking of trend, today we're going to look at the S&P 500, the SOX, and the semiconductor stocks, and we'll look at the overall trend situation and then the short-term condition that we're in. And it gets a bit tricky at this stage. We'll see that healthcare is starting to stand out among the sectors. We'll look at some top stocks in healthcare. I'll show you a technique for setting stops for F5 networks to avoid whipsaws. And we'll look at trading the pattern within the pattern for Cisco. So let's start with the S&P 500, because as the S&P 500 goes, so goes the majority of the stock market. Some 70 to 80 percent of stocks will be up on a day when the S&P 500 is up. So if we look at the overall trend for the S&P 500, it is up. And according to my indicators, the breath tables, we've been in a bull market environment since the middle of February, February 15th, to be precise. We can see currently the 20-day moving average, the green dash line is above the 200-day moving average, which is the red line that has flattened out. We had this sharp decline, but it was around 7% after a 26% advance. So that's pretty normal for a correction within a bigger uptrend. We found support near that March low, and we rebounded with a 5.3% advance over the last five days. So currently we're within a two, less than 2% from a 52 week high again. So when you're that close to a 52 week high, clearly the cup is half full. It is not half empty. It is more bullish than bearish. So that is the overall trend situation for the S&P 500. And that means we are in, we're not in a bear market. That's for sure. When the S&P 500 is this close to a 52 week high, and I would suggest that we're still in a bull market. So strategically, the longer term trend is up, and that means we want to have a bullish bias. Now, tactically, we would look at the short term situation. And short term, we are overbought because you can see that the S&P 500 is up 5.3% on a closing basis over the last five days. Now, we really don't need any overbought, oversold oscillators to tell us we're overbought. We can just look at this advance and we can see it's a very strong advance. Now, what concerns me about this advance is we had a sharp decline, of course, before. It's a very sharp advance. Now, if you're looking to enter the market, when you're short term overbought after a 5.3 percent advance, that's usually not the best opportunity. And then I look back to October and November, and you can see we had a 6.5% advance in seven days, a very short, sharp advance. And we had a 6% advance in six days. And both of these, you see the RSI moved above 70 on both of them and then turned down. So maybe we're getting into some sort of rally like that. Maybe this is a sharp reaction. Now, I'm still bullish, don't get me wrong, and we'll see what happens. But if we pull back and we start firming in that 28, 20 area or something near that 20 day, then that might be a tactical place to look to get into this bounce. But right now, with the overbought situation, I would be I would err more on the side of caution right now. Now, overbought is a tricky situation. If you look at RSI in the indicator window, you can see in early July, it became overbought with that move above 70. And it remained pretty much overbought several times, moving above 70 throughout July, August, and September, and did not go below 30 there. And if you look at the price of the S&P 500, there you had that initial surge to become overbought. And then the S&P 500 just continued higher throughout the summer and into early September. If you look here in January, we had the overbought condition there. And then we became overbought for several weeks into early March as the S&P 500 continued higher in price. We got one oversold reading, which was an opportunity. 
And then we became overbought again for several weeks from the middle part of March till the latter part of April. Now the upset, uh, uh, now the exceptions here would be November and early December when we became overbought and then we turned down sharply. So that might be something to watch for. And I got a second chart to deal with that. So if we look at SPY here, what I've got is I've got three indicators to define the current condition for the market, the short term condition. You can see we got the stochastic oscillator and it's above 80. We've got the PPO 110 which shows you the percentage above the 10 day EMA. And you can see we're 1.88% above the 10 day EMA. And that is the most we've been above the 10 day EMA since February or so. So that means we're a bit stretched as far as how far above the 10 day EMA we are. And then you can see RSI is above 70. Now this is not the signal to short the market. All right, I'm not a big fan of shorting the market in general, but it's just saying for the long side of the equation, I think a little caution is advised. So on May 30th in on trend on YouTube and on Stock Charts TV, I focused on the semiconductor group and this is just uh, the middle of the video at the 1944 mark you see there. Uh, but basically, I was showing SOX, how it had this big run up to a new high, had this pullback here. And you can see it was coming back to the, re the resistance break and support and the 200 day and the retracement. And it was setting up for an oversold bounce, even though it was clobbered in May we can still expect oversold bounces to occur. So I want to follow up on that to see where we're at. You know, even if you consider yourself an investor or a position trader and not a short term swing trader or a day trader, I think it can you can benefit greatly by focusing on the short term condition for a particular name. And the semiconductors is a really good case in point here. So if we look at conditions here, you know, we were breaking out to new highs and we were becoming overbought in RSI on a regular basis. So when we got these little pullbacks here, those were the opportunities within the bigger uptrend. So we got a pullback here at this stage in early May, but not all pullbacks reversed right away. And you can see we came all the way down to the 175 area. But that was an important area that should have put us on alert for a potential bounce. And that's why I highlighted it two weeks ago. Because you can see you had a number of things pointing to support. First, you had the resistance zone from these two highs and you had the breakout. All right, then we had a low there and then we came back to that low. So that was broken resistance turning into support and reinforced by the low. And there was the 200 day moving average. Now, I don't think the 200 day is like a support level to tell you the truth. Uh, when you're above it, you have a bullish bias. When you're below it, you have a bearish bias. That's about the extent of the 200 day. But what I do notice is you had this huge advance that was like two steps forward. And so one step backward would be fairly normal. And basically, we got a 50 to 61.8 percent retracement as you can see from the Fibonacci retracements tool that I measured from the low of the move in late December to the high of the move in April. So we got down to this area and we stalled for a number of days and then we got the breakout move last week. And so now you look at where we're at. Well, we've had this gap up. Okay, the gap is bullish, but we're short term overbought. Now, yeah, I know I'm using RSI 10 here. Uh, but it's not above 70 yet. So we could have further to go, maybe to 200. Uh, but the point is the short term condition is not favorable anymore because you're getting overbought after this move, basically from 175 to 192. So it might be time to just watch a little bit. If we look at some of the stocks that were covered in that on trend episode, we have analog devices. 
Uh, this is a beautiful setup. I think it's one you have to put into your book to remember in the future. You had the breakout zone that turns into a support zone, and we held just above it. And you can see that this decline retraced 61.8% roughly. We firmed for a few days, and then we had that Tuesday surge to get the breakout. And then yesterday, we had the gap and the big move higher. So that's like a breakaway gap at this stage. So this is clearly bullish, but we're already up from 96 to 106. We're up like 10%. So this would be chasing right now, and I would let it come to me, let the market come to you. Uh, instead of chasing the market, you know, down here we're saying, okay, we have a setup. Here we have a breakout, but I don't think it's a setup necessarily. Then we look at applied materials. Here's another one that is showing strength. You can see that similar situation in these broken resistance turning into support. And then you can see applied materials did not breach that 50% retracement level, it held up better. It retraced 38 to 50 percent and it got that little break out there. So it looks like it wants to move higher. But again, it's getting short term overbought already. We look at Intel. Now, Intel is well, it was it went from being one of the strongest stocks up here with this gap after this gap down and, and plunge. It became one of the weakest stocks. But this is, in essence, an island reversal. You can see that this gap here is an exhaustion gap, and that's a breakaway gap. And there's another common gap or continuation gap. But we were at support at some point. And the thing also is a lot of semiconductors show these characteristics, not just one, not just the socks, but several of the key semiconductor stocks had these characteristics. They were at a potential support level. They were oversold as measured by RSI or measured by the previous decline, and they were firming for a few days. And now we've got the bounce. Now, is Intel a chase here? Yeah, I don't think so, because it's not one of my preferred stocks just because of its overall trend. You can see it's just been sideways the whole time. Here is a KLA 10 core, and you can see that it has this breakout here. Again, you have this resistance zone turning into a support zone. You retrace 50 to 62 percent. You had a big breakaway gap there down. That's negative. But then, you know, you hit this support zone and this is after a 52 week high and you firm for a few days and then you get the little breakout. So I think, you know, the way to play these is to either anticipate the bounce off support or look for that first catalyst, all right? There was a catalyst on Tuesday with a big move, and then the previous Wednesday we got the breakout. Now we've seen a short-term leadership shift in these sectors over the past, say, six weeks or so. And what I'm seeing is I'm seeing healthcare emerge as one of the leading sectors. And I'm making that assessment based on the May high. Because if you look at these sectors, here I've got the top six sectors in the S&P 500, and together they account for 78% of the market. There's the May high for technology, XLK. We're below it. There's the May high for finance. We're below it. There's the May high for industrials. We're below it. There's the May high for XLY. We're below it. And there's the May high for XLC. We're below it. Well, there's the May high for XLV, and we're just above it. In addition, you can see this higher low working from April to the latter part of May, and we've got this move back above the 200-day. Now, overall, you've got this big consolidation, this big triangle pattern, but we're breaking out of the triangle. And John Murphy noted this in his commentary last week. So healthcare, I think, is emerging as one of the leading sectors. And within healthcare, it's healthcare devices, medical devices that is leading this group. And I'll look at some of those stocks in a minute. Now, if we look at the other sectors, which make up like 22% of the S&P 500, I mean, you know, 
XLP and XLE are the big ones. And then XLB, XLRE, and XLU are kind of like three percenters. So they don't really matter that much. But, you know, XLE is by far the weakest sector below the falling 200-day, below support there. Uh, consumer staples, one of the strongest ones. That's a new 52-week high. Materials, man, what a surge over the past few days, that big move up. And if you look at some of the big chemical stocks like Air Products and Linda and Ecolab, man, they are seriously strong. REITs remain strong. Utilities remain strong overall. And there is SBY for reference. But the main point is I'm seeing the emergence of XLV healthcare as a leading sector. So now I'm going to move over to the Stock Charts ACP advanced charting platform here. And this is really a cool feature that we've got. It's basically interactive charting. It's very intuitive. You can do scrolling on the date axis very easily, which I really, really like. For instance, if I click the round button there at the top with the two arrows, I've turned it off. Now I've turned it on. So now when I hover over the chart, if I roll my mouse wheel, then I can scroll out and see a longer time frame. If I want to zoom in, I can see a shorter time frame here. And if I want to change one of these moving averages, I would just right click on it. And you can see I can change that to say 20 period and click update. I can also change the colors real easy. I'll make it green, update, and I'll get that new 20 day moving average in green. So if you look at healthcare, as I said before, you got to consider the overall trend and the condition. And so if I look at the overall trend here, I think it has turned up because we have a breakout there, a triangle breakout. We have a breakout above these two highs here. And then short term, we're getting a little bit extended because we've had a move from, say, 87 to 91. That's a pretty sharp advance in a short time span. And you can see that RSI has moved above 80. So it is short term overbought. But I think uh, this is a significant move and a breakout in the works. And I would put healthcare on my radar. Now, of course, the sector is only as good as its holdings. And so I always like to go to the State Street Global Advisors website. This is spdrs.com. And you can search for XLV there to find the holdings for the ETF. And there is a tab there for the holdings. And if I click on that tab, I can see the top stocks in this ETF. And there you can see Johnson & Johnson, Pfizer, United Health Corp, and Merck are clearly the biggest stocks in this ETF. And let's look at some of these big stocks. So here's a long-term chart for Johnson & Johnson. And yeah, it's mostly moving from the lower left to the upper right. But you can see along the way that you are getting some pullbacks. You can see a very deep pullback there at the beginning of 2018. A big gap down and a sharp decline, but a recovery. And if I use the mouse wheel, I can scroll out and see the details of this chart now. But what's amazing, I think, is here we have another gap and a sharp decline. And Johnson & Johnson has already rallied back up to that high. It has filled that gap. So this stock is showing some pretty good strength. I'm impressed. And if you look at it overall, you can see that that is basically a triangle consolidation too. And it's on the verge of breaking out. But very impressive price action to fill that gap. Next up, we'll look at Pfizer. And Pfizer, I think, has a pretty nice longer term chart. So I can change this to weekly if I want even more perspective here. So clearly a long-term uptrend since 2009, but that's no surprise. Uh, but what caught my eye here is that you had this big move up basically from April or so 2018 until the latter part of 2000, 
18. And then we have what looks like some sort of channel correction. And now we're breaking out of that channel for Pfizer. So Pfizer is showing some strength on the weekly chart. Look at UNH, United Health Group. And on the weekly chart, we can see it's been correcting for most of the last seven to eight months. And I'll move that period setting back to daily for a little more granularity. And then I can scroll out. So we can see that it has been in a, in a decline here since December 2018. So it hasn't participated in the broad market advance. This wouldn't be one of my favorite charts. I think uh, out of these first three, I think Pfizer probably looks the strongest with that breakout. And then if we look at Merck, Merck is one of the strongest because it's very close to a 52-week high. If we zoom in on this recent price action here and make some drawings, we can see a bit of a, and I don't think that's a robust uh, triangle working here, but what I can see is, you know, there's a little flag wedge-like pullback. Here's a little pullback and then a breakout, but it's very close to a 52-week high and showing some leadership here. I want to talk a little bit about stops because I've done some back testing and I found that tighter stops do not work as well as wider stops. And I know we've all heard a million times, cut your losses and let your profits run, blah, blah, blah. But the reality is if you do a back test over a 10, 20 year period and you use tight stop losses, you're going to get whipsawed all over the place. You can end up with a bunch of small losses. And if you use a wider stop loss, then you're going to get fewer whipsaws and you're going to catch longer uptrends. Now, I know it all depends on your time frame, but I think with stop losses, you know, there's no one specific level that works the best because the markets are dynamic and adjust. But, you know, something like an 8 to 10 percent stop loss is probably going to work better than a 2 to 4 percent stop loss because you're not going to get whipsawed and stopped out before the trend reverses and continues higher. And it's just a short-term knee-jerk reaction that gets you stopped out. Now, if we look at this chart for Fiserv here, which is one I've been highlighting over the last few weeks, you had a resistance zone there that was clearly broken. You had another resistance zone here that was broken first. So you have a bullish configuration, but clearly you're overbought. And then you work off the overbought, continue, uh, the overbought condition with some sideways action. So basically, we have a new support level emerging there. And we can mark it there in that 82, 83 area. So Fiserv gets this breakout here. It moves sideways, and then it gets a breakout. And so that's bullish. Now, if you're playing the breakout, you're going to be long here. If you're playing the bullish engulfing and continuation, maybe you're long within the pattern. Uh, but it looks like, you know, Pfizer breaks a support level here with that sharp decline. And it even dips below this low, this February low intraday. And that would have gotten people that had intraday stops in out because it rebounded immediately. And then you can see you had that sharp decline back into that support zone and you rebounded immediately. So that's why I'm saying wider stops are usually working better than tighter stops. And then if we look at this pattern overall for Fiserv, it's still one of the leading stocks. You have basically what's become a triangle type consolidation. This is just one big consolidation and we're breaking out of it with a big gap. But we are getting extended short term. So you might let the market come to you and wait for a pullback. Now, I don't use candlesticks very much, but sometimes they come in handy when you're looking for a pattern that is taking shape and you want to pay, play the reversal within the pattern. And what do I mean by that? Well, here is Cisco. And we can see that Cisco clearly a leader there with that big move from late December continuing to new highs in April. And so after this big move, it went into a consolidation and you can see here with this reversal that we got in at the end of May and early June, 
we have a potential higher low and a bigger triangle. And that's a triangle consolidation after an advance. And I would expect a breakout higher. Now, playing the breakout is a bit iffy because, you know, you look at market conditions, you're overbought. And so it's not the ideal spot. The better spot would be near this reversal here. So how do we do that? Well, if we scroll in and look at the price action during that two week stretch when we got that reversal here, and I'll, I'll leave this on for a minute because I want to show you that if you're using indicators, you're usually going to miss the move. All right, if you look at MACD, well, it moved above its signal line here at 55. All right, and you can see MACD just turned positive there the next day. So, you know, most indicators are going to lag. You're going to have to be narrowing your list and watching the charts closely. Now, on the ACP, what I'm going to do here is turn off the crosshairs. And now I'm going to delete these indicators. You can hit the, click the name of the indicator there, and you can get the settings if you want to change them. I'm going to go ahead and delete them because I just want to focus on price. And if you look at the price here, and I'll also remove the 200-day because we don't need it here. So I right click on the 200 day and I can delete it. And so now we have a chart where we can just focus on price action. In fact, why don't I just get that 20 day out of the way as well. So if we just focus on this triangle consolidation that we have here, we can see that there is the bullish candlestick reversal. You had a gap down, then you had the indecisive spinning top type candlestick and a gap up and a long white candlestick. So that was the reversal. And then you had another gap up that next day. And so that is a short term reversal within the pattern. Otherwise, you're looking at a breakout in the 57 area to confirm the bigger triangle pattern, if you will. So there's your trend line there. And we're right at that trend line now. That's the bigger pattern at work. But this is the pattern reversal within the pattern, if you will. You can also go to a shorter time period. So I could go to a 30 minute chart and I don't need candlesticks for 30 minutes. So I'll go open, high, low, close. And then I can use the mouse wheel to scroll out. And you can see here we had this decline. And then there is a breakout above resistance with this gap and move higher. And then we had another resistance breakout with the second gap. So you can also go into a, a shorter time frame, like 30 minutes to focus on a move within a move. And note that you can see on trend on Stock Charts TV on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 1030 a.m. Here I am on the Stock Charts TV page. And if you scroll down, you can see the schedule for the current day with the current program highlighted in red. And there is on trend and there's a little blue icon to the right with an arrow. And that is a link for all the replays. And that concludes this edition of on trend. Thanks very much for tuning in and remember to stay on the right side of the trend. Have a great day. Market direction is the single most important thing all investors need to know. Get the advice you need by joining dozens of elite money managers and financial experts, including Steve Forbes, Paul Merriman, Tom McClellan, and Keith Fitzgerald at the Money Show Seattle June 15th and 16th. You'll hear real-time market analysis and learn which stocks, bonds, funds, and commodities you should buy and sell to build a safer, more profitable portfolio. Claim your free pass at seattlemoneyshow.com.